What's up guys, Rob the Awesome here, and welcome to part 3 of the explanations to all the balance changes made in the Meet Your Match update. If you haven't seen parts 1 or 2, I recommend that you do. Click on the annotations on your screen to take you there now. I mean, unless you really don't care why the Natasha and the Brassbees got such a huge nerf, then that's alright with me. Alright, you good to go? Now, let's wrap this up by explaining the changes Valve made to the Medic, the Sniper, and the Spy with this update. Let's go! I think the hypest change in the update was the base change for all Medic guns that allowed the Medic to match the speed of their heal target, but only if the target is faster than the Medic himself. This buff was really unexpected. I bet no one saw this coming and made a lot of Medic mains super happy when they first laid their eyes on the change. Let's be honest, the one metagun that ruled over the rest in competitive beta was the quick fix. Now, Valve needed a way to find a substantial change to the quick fix without making it utterly useless by default. So they thought, why not give every metagun some of that speed boost love to make them one of the fastest to get to the mid on rollouts. This has a lot of comp use and makes neglected scout tank builds and ubers much more prominent on the battlefield, especially since scout ubers can be some of the strongest attack points and pushes in the game. This also solves the problem of scouts running away from medics when all they were trying to do is help them. Wasn't that annoying? Now scouts can continue to be their happy-go-lucky selves and the medics can actually catch up. Though this may seem like a huge change, the only classes and tactics this new ability works with is scouts, shield charging demos, and disciplinary boosted classes. I'm sure there are many others that are missing, but the point is that there aren't that many that it'll be used every second of the fight. It's a little change that helps out in a competitive and logical sense. Medic mains will more than likely continue to play Medic the way they were always playing him. But when it now comes to scouts and the neglected heals they got in the past, these Medic guns are now balanced with healing every class properly, anytime, and anywhere on the front lines. Speaking of the quick fix, it was realistic to think that it would get a nerf. And guess what? It got nerfed! The overcharge rate on the quick fix is now reduced to plus 15% from the original plus 25% that it started out with. Let's not forget that the quick fix was nerfed in a way that lets other metaguns have the same speed as their heal targets, something that was originally only for the quick fix and was also the reason many people used it. Now that every metagun has it and its overcharge rate got decreased, everyone's automatically assuming that the quick fix is the worst metagun of all time now. Well, that's not exactly true. It's actually still pretty good. Sure, every metagun has the ability to achieve scout speed, but the quick fix has the potential scout mobility and jumping classes like Soldier and Demo. Those classes can get them to new heights and coordinate strategies that would get them to areas even scouts can't normally get them. You may get the speed of the scout with other metaguns, but not the jumps or the height, which makes the quick fix have an edge on maps that have huge height advantage areas that can keep you with your damage capable comrades at any time. So that's a neat little thing that the other metaguns didn't get. It keeps a special thing that makes the quick fix unique and special in its own little way. Not to mention, it still heals people really quickly, with a very good uber charge that heals your target three times what even the quick fix would normally give you. The quick fix is still amazing, it just needs to be downscaled from all of its radiant glory. It was definitely considered the best metagun in the game, now it's time to even it out with the rest, and even now, it's still pretty darn great. But what about that uber charge rate decrease? Doesn't that ruin the weapon? Let's be honest, any buff or nerf that adds 10% to a stat really isn't a lot. Reducing the uber charge rate by 10% is really not that noticeable. You still gain uber charge fast regardless and get an edge on your opponents. The reason for this change was that the quick fix was able to achieve ubers a little too fast and achieve close to two ubers when other metaguns could only get one. Keeping medics and low health targets alive with ease and constantly getting that ability in a short amount of time was a little too good. I mean, you can still build with a soldier or a demo to get that uber charge rate back to the way it was before, so it's like nothing really ever changed. But even so, this gives the other metaguns a chance to shine in the spotlight and give a more prominent use in competitive and casual communities. It didn't really get heavily nerfed at all. It's now a balanced weapon to give the other metaguns room to stand out and shine to any and all medic mains out there. The quick fix was certainly a weapon that needed the changes, and another weapon that also floats in the same boat is the overdose. This weapon got buffed to stand out a little more, increasing the movement speed bonus to plus 20% from the original 10%, but increased the damage penalty to minus 15% from the original minus 10%. Before you scream and shout about how Valve didn't make the speed boost passive, hear me out. 
I did mention that 10% is nothing when it's on any weapon, and when it originally gave a plus 10% speed bonus, it really didn't seem like much at all. Because of that, people wanted it to become passive, and I couldn't agree more. Now that you gain plus 20% speed bonus, making the weapon have a passive speed bonus in itself would be a little too crazy. The extra speed you get at maximum overcharge is super noticeable now. I feel like I'm running at the speed of a scout, maybe even faster. This kind of became like the power jack for the medic. You don't need to use it to damage people, but its deploy usage has sparked up tenfold. Not to mention, the new damage penalty really doesn't seem like much at all. At a close distance, one needle from a stock syringe gun can do 11 to 13 damage. Take 15% away from that and you only lose around 2 to 3 damage off of those needles. It really isn't a lot when you have 40 in your clip and that hitting a full clip on a heavy can still kill him even with the damage penalty. People should understand that the damage syringe guns can potentially do is nuts. Even a minus 50% damage penalty isn't enough to stop syringe guns from being badass damage dealers. The more you think about it, the more the overdose has become the gun version of the power jack, but for medic. When you use the power jack, do you notice that you take more damage when you have it out? Not really. Same with the overdose. You honestly won't notice the damage penalty since the new speed boost abilities are through the roof. The overdose is now an amazing primary for the medic that has a lot of meta and strategic uses that it didn't have before. Step aside Crusader's Crossbow, the future has its sights on the overdose and it's looking pretty bright. Valve did an amazing job balancing this underrated gun and making it superior in its never ending uses. Thank you Valve. And even though Valve could have stopped there, they decided to even fix drop meta guns by decaying stored uber charge over time after coming to rest. This makes it so that the Vitasaw can actually be a bit more viable instead of having your team guard the gun and just getting all your charge back to begin with. It's more realistic that the charge would decay without a backpack and leaves it to chance whether the medic keeps some of the uber charge or not. There is one thing I don't quite understand though, and that is how fast the decay actually is. I swear, it takes 2 seconds for all that uber to drain out of the gun not even giving a second medic who was standing right next to you when you first died to even get a portion of that uber back if he even decides to pick it up. It's a little fast if I do say so myself. Maybe giving the spawning medic a chance to gain it back would be wonderful. Well, now that I think about it, if a medic heavy combo came on by and killed you, the medic would get a big edge on your team and just outright decimate them. Meh, I guess it's all for the best for the drain to be big. It's a neat little balance change that ultimately makes gameplay fair for every team. All of these medic changes were the highlight of the update for me. Everyone was a great change of pace and it made everything nice and balanced the way they should be. We may be nearing the end of our list, but I'd say some of the more crucial changes made were done to the sniper in very cool and unexpected ways. The overpowered backpack we know to be the cozy camper was indeed nerfed, and for good reason too. Instead of permanently having the no flinch ability on the class when equipped, it is now required that the sniper be in a full charge state in order to receive the amazing no flinching properties. Having the ability to not flinch when something from afar was hitting you is an extremely good stat for sniper, especially when it used to be a permanent stat on the class for any situation. Matched with its healing abilities and its non-existent extra damage penalty, it made this the go-to secondary weapon for any and all snipers. Especially in a competitive setting where a sniper had a major defensive setup with medics constantly healing him and heavies and demos being the main distraction, snipers would have a walk in the park picking off targets with ease. The reason for the nerf is kind of like the reason for the soda popper nerf, it was being abused to hell, having sniper have too much ability and free roam to get quick scopes in without any consequences. But now, a sniper needs to earn this ability by putting himself in a very vulnerable full charge state in order to get any of the benefits. Quick scoper and mobile huntsman snipers will no longer be getting the benefits, instead it benefits more charged up gameplay for sniper while putting emphasis on the weapon's other stats. Consider the backpack to have a positive which is the healing aspect, and a negative, which is the damage penalty, to make a balanced weapon. The flinch resistance is now a neutral stat as a reward for charging up your shot, which is something that was definitely needed to make other sniper secondaries more appealing and interesting to choose from. Though it doesn't change as the best secondary for the sniper, due to the fact that full charging a shot with the amount of defense you get in competitive gives you still a ton of time to make shots and continue on as if the nerf didn't even exist, this change makes the weapon an overall balanced and rewarding experience for all snipers alike. Not to mention, it adds a little bonus to other sniper rifles that also add emphasis to full charged abilities, giving more variety to even more sniper rifles. Seems like a great change to me. 
Speaking of sniper secondaries, the cleaner's carbine got a fix that removed the hidden plus 10% damage taken multiplier under the effects of the weapon's crikey meter. Though this is a nice little fix that doesn't change the entirety of the weapon's state, there was one thing I wanted to see fixed with this weapon that made spy checking a whole lot easier. If you shoot a disguised spy with this weapon, you would gain crikey charge making it obvious that he was an enemy spy. I don't know if Valve has no idea that this is in the game, or if this is an intended hidden stat, but regardless I think that removing this would help us spies a ton and give them the element of surprise they deserve. However, that extra damage taken when affecting the charge was an important fix, since no one should be taking any extra damage unless it is written as a stat on the weapon. So I'm glad that they caught onto something that probably pissed off a lot of snipers. I didn't notice it personally, but I'm glad they did. The Cleaner's Carbine continues to be the balanced and wholehearted weapon it always was. Lastly, the most exciting of the sniper changes is the Sydney Sleeper, giving the weapon huge buffs to supportive and crowd control gameplay. When fully charged or when making headshots, you can now apply a huge Jurati radius affecting huge swarms of enemies nearby. And as a sweet added bonus, you are now able to extinguish teammates by scoping in and shooting them anywhere with the piss rifle. The Sydney Sleeper did receive a lot of buffs in recent times. It was a weapon with limited use and a huge negative edge. The ability to not do huge headshot damage was a travesty to any and all sniper mains. What's a sniper rifle without the crucial and instantaneous damage that is the headshot? Without something this important, people moved on to other weapons to please their endless killing needs. No matter what Valve added to the weapon, a sniper rifle with no headshot ability is automatically going to pull people away, neglecting this weapon as gimmicky and fake. But by finally adding in a headshot mechanic, one that isn't an insta-kill but supplies the piss rifle's purpose, makes it more appealing to snipers as well as accommodates for a more mass casualty advantage. For example, a single full charge shot or headshot on the heavy has the potential to soak the medic and any other damage targets around making it easier for the team to achieve a huge kill streak on super important classes. And that's only the tip of the iceberg with what it can potentially do in a team element. The thing about the Sydney Sleeper is that it's a full-on support weapon. You are aiming to supply more assists than you are kills, accommodating for a more full-charged approach and one that helps your team out in most situations. If you wanted to send a message to newer and or existing players about what the gun's real intentions are, why not logically insert a mechanic that douses flames with your own piss-filled darts? It's not game-breaking, nor will it be game-changing either, but this neutral stat is meant to convey a message that this will help support your team, so use it as intended. Valve is very sneaky with these messages, but their hearts are in the right places. So with the mass casualty support effect and the message conveyed to show people how to properly and effectively use the weapon, the storybook of changes to the Sydney Sleeper closes with a couple of brand new buffs. It's now a super viable and potentially super powerful weapon that we've been hoping it would be for years. Living up to the standards of the other rifles and surprisingly balancing out with the huge no headshot debuff. I'm glad to say it, this weapon is now balanced. In a surprise twist, the sniper had one of the most balanced batches of buffs and nerfs so far, making every sniper main jump and rejoice. I'm super glad with these changes and excited to see the potential that these weapons now have. But moving forward though, we have one more class that needs to be discussed. The Master of Disguise and the Stabber backs himself. We call upon the Spy to show us what he got in terms of buffs and nerfs. As one of the few classes to get an actual character change, the Spy got a speed boost from 300 to 320, making him the speed of a medic to get away and chase down opponents much easier than before. As much as people say this was something that Spy really didn't need, I kinda have to disagree. Have you ever had it where you were trying to stab a pyro and you were chasing him forever? Or have you ever had it where you were trying to escape a pyro, but his flames would always keep up with you, ultimately killing you in the end? Spy having the same speed as his direct counter is a real issue in terms of escaping and stabbing, which made Spy a real challenge for casual and even competitive usages. But now with this added speed, he can now get a lot more done and be a real threat in the heat of battle. Being the speed of a medic makes the medic disguise viable while all in all making the other disguises, which has less speed, even more viable than it was before. People have become too attuned to Spy's way of getting in, but with this new speed, Spies also have new parkour options to get around corners and jumps they wouldn't normally get to before, being more surprising and helpful to the team. This was a good call on Valve's part that makes the Spy an overall better experience and balance considering his many counters. Good job, Valve. Good job. 
Spy is finally getting a bit of love after all the heavy hits it took in previous updates, and the love keeps on coming when they decide to buff the Enforcer. They gave the gun the ability to pierce through resist and absorb effects from all sources. This is a stat that could change the meta, fully stopping vaccinator pushes, stopping Darwin Danger Shield snipers, even heavies with the resistance guns. This can be a huge takedown gun that could be a huge damage dealer in major situations. It's a great little buff that makes the Enforcer a worthwhile and balanced gun, if it wasn't for the fact that the stat isn't even sure how it wants to work. It doesn't work on a majority of the resistance weapons, like Darwin's and Natasha, and it's quite confusing what situations it actually works on. Valve needs to fix how it works, or reword what situations work with its new perk. Otherwise, it will be a pointless add-on to the weapon that desperately needs a new mechanic. All in all though, when they fix how they want it to work, it will be a very balanced weapon with a neat positive and negative balance all around. Those were some pretty crazy changes. Valve has really impressed me with all of those proper changes that people seem to be complaining about. Perhaps Valve doesn't play their game as much as they once did. Sure. But we can now see that everything has evened out for a better casual and competitive environment. Valve did an exceptional job doing these changes, and we should give them a round of applause. In all this negativity, the least we can do is look for the positives, and I gotta say that these changes are the most positive thing about this update. Thank you guys so much for watching. Tell me what you guys think in the comments below. Share these parts with your friends so that they may understand that these changes really aren't that bad. Leave a like and subscribe for the amount of effort put into analyzing these changes, as well as to let me know that you guys want more informational videos like these in the future. Remember to be awesome, stay awesome, and to have an awesome day. I'm Rob the Awesome, and I'll see you guys later. Ciao for now. Motherfucker, I'm awesome. No, you're not, dude. Don't lie. I'm awesome. I'm driving around in my mom's ride. I'm awesome. A quarter of my life gone by, and I met all my friends online. Motherfucker, I'm awesome. I will run away from a brawl. I'm awesome. There's no voicemail, nobody calls. I'm awesome. I can't afford to buy eight balls, and I talk to myself on my Facebook wall. You know my pants sag low.